right here is what we live for. We came here for the SEC big time game. Here comes the Alabama Crimson Tide. Robinson straight up the middle. Touchdown. Make it four for four. Touchdown, Alabama. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown, Alabama. You gotta believe. Find out who we are now. Every play. Spiller on his way. Touchdown. He is sacked. The Aggies defense does it again. The Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us prime time into Bryan College Station, Texas. And our matchup, the Aggies of Texas A&M against the number one team in the country, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Full house at Kyle Field. We might have a record crowd. It'll be over 105,000 that we know. Alabama comes in riding a 19 game winning streak. They've won eight straight in this series. Can Texas A&M pull the upset tonight at the home of the 12th man? And welcome everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. My partners are Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl. Gary, they circled this one on the calendar last year after Texas A&M lost to Alabama. They didn't lose again until two weeks ago. Well, that's the problem. They lost two weeks ago, and they lost last week. And here's Alabama right where they expected to be undefeated. Alabama's used to this. You know, for over 10 years, we've been watching them come into visiting crowds like this. They can make their season by beating Alabama. But for A&M, this was supposed to be the year. Right. This is Jimbo's rebuild. They've got a veteran team. Those two losses have stung. They're wounded. But tonight can, can change a lot of things for this Aggie football team. Well, Alabama comes in averaging over 45 points a game. They're led by a young quarterback, Bryce Young in this case. But he's not playing like a young guy's playing great. No, you know, we thought like Owen Hurts leaves. Uh oh, we got two oh, two of leaves. Mac Jones, can they replace Mac Jones? Yes, they have. Bryce Young has taken it and gone. He's an electrifying football player. As calm as he can be, he's got the feet when he needs them, he's got the arm when he needs them, and he's got a lot of talent around him. He is making this thing go. It really helps when you've got an offensive line like he's got, and here's those guys. One thing that's kind of appeared in the SEC so far, you've got to win the line of scrimmage to beat the big guys. And this big guys for these Alabama football team, they got them on the offensive or the defensive line. They got some big guys. Well, Texas A&M's had some trouble because they've had to play their backup quarterback, Zach Calzada. With more on that, let's head down to Jamie. The tough reality is that this Texas A&M offense just hasn't clicked since Zach Calzada took over at quarterback after their starter Haynes King fractured his leg in the second game of the season. There was optimism in King's recovery. However, head coach Jimbo Fisher told us yesterday that it is unlikely that King will return this season. So how do you get Calzada to a point where he is running this offense efficiently? I spoke to his teammates. They all said the same thing. This young man has to trust that the feedback he is getting within this building will get him to a point to point this offense in the right direction and like we've said all along how about a little help he needs some help he does and it's not just help from the other 21 guys he needs it from the coaching staff but first he should turn around and look where I think his immediate help is two of the best running backs in the SEC Spiller and a chain they are game breakers if they can get that game running game going just a bit their quarterback might be enough tonight the 14th meeting all time between the Aggies and the Tide and here comes the number one team in the country. And that chorus of boos will turn into cheers momentarily when the Aggies hit the tunnel. What a scene. 105,000, the stadium starting to sway. There's Reveille, Miss Reb. She looks calm. Maybe she should play quarterback tonight. And now all those 
practice yells from midnight last night will come to fruition. And the Crimson Tide in Bryan College Station. Coming up next, the Home Depot SEC on CBS, sponsored by GMC, Verizon, Allstate, and by Jersey Mike Subs. minute the Aggies weren't going to show here they come maybe a little gamesmanship there by Jimbo Fisher I was I don't going know. to say Nick Saban will not be happy about that of course Nick Saban has never lost to one of his former assistants 24 and 0 comes in with eight straight wins in this series that is in its 14th game. It was warm today, but not bad right now. 83 degrees. Southeast winds at about 10. Bamba won the toss and deferred. We always get asked, right, Ness, where should we go to really get the feel of college football? This has got to be one of the spots. This is. The stadium starts moving with the student body, actually. Feels like you're in the middle of an earthquake yeah. in East Central Texas. Will Reichard's got it teed up. Jalen Preston and Devon A. Chain are back deep. Jimbo Fisher is fourth season as a head coach here at Texas a and they were underway. And the Aggies will come out to the 25. As we take a look at our lineups presented by Papa John. And it starts with this guy, Zach Calzada. Played at Lanier High School in Sugar Hill, Georgia. Last week, pretty good game, had a touchdown run and a pass. But they need him to be very efficient against an excellent Crimson Tide defense. We talked to Jimbo. He says he's getting better and better. But as you say, he needs to be a little bit better <laughs> against these guys. Isaiah Spiller with him in the backfield. And Isaiah Smith was a motion man. Here's Spiller. This is a guy Gary said turn around and give it to this guy. And he picked up five, almost six yards with an offense joining him that looks like this. And Isaiah Smith, a little bit quiet the last couple weeks, had big games early. He is their leading receiver, but. His per catch average is not what it was a year ago. It's kind of a double whammy for the Aggies. Not only do they lose their starting quarterback, but they're playing two true freshman offensive linemen. They have shuffled that offensive line every week. Alabama trying to get an extra player off, and they do on second and five. Spiller, big opening off the left side. Isaiah Spiller all the way out to the 45 yard line. A stretch play and Isaiah Spiller is calmly, calmly, calmly take the cutback. He just goes and he's got great vision. When you watch all his runs, he gets to the second level and seems to be able to find the big play. That's 16 on that one. Play action bootleg. Calzada going to throw on the run and throws a dart to Nia Smith and another first down. So how do you help the quarterback? Struggling quarterback, hasn't played a lot, not of a lot of experience. You run the ball successfully and then you roll him out just a one-on-one -on -one throw. And on top of that, I think he's going to get 15 yards. Got a flag down. 
Personal foul, roughing the passer with targeting. Defense number 13, the 15 yard penalty, the previous plays in the video review. So they're going to review it to see on the targeting call as well. Oh man. I did not see the end of the play, I'll be honest with you. So that's definitely. And it was Malachi Moore who hits him. Mechanic tries to get him with a forearm, but his face mask runs into the quarterback as the ball is let go. Of course, they're going to look for targeting here. And it does appear the forehead hits the quarterback, and he's treated differently, a quarterback. Or didn't think we we're going to use Gene's territory so quickly, but uh, <laughs> well, here's the call. It's not going to take long. Review, the ruling of targeting is confirmed. Number 13 is disqualified. First down, Texas Yeah, let's bring in Gene. Yeah, yeah, Brad. Uh, guys, uh, in this situation, the quarterback is a defenseless player. So, although the contact was not with the crown of the helmet, it does occur with with an attacking fashion to the head and neck area. So, for that reason, that's why that was a very quick confirmation for targeting. Yeah. If these players would just learn to bring their arms and tackle instead of trying to get the shot with the head in the face, they would get away with. They're trying as hard as they can to take that out, bring the arm. He'd still be playing. Malachi Moore's night only lasts a minute and 15 seconds. He's done. It's going to hurt Alabama in going to their dime package. Very important in dime package. Now Branch will play in his spot. On the 28th, first down and a nice throw and catch. Demas this time. So we take a look at the defense. We're talking about the defense for the Crimson Tide and. This guy is the one that brings the pressure. Mathis has been sensational. He's the guy that was firing the teammates up, as you saw in that huddle before the game. But that secondary looks different now because number 13 is out of there. Yeah, Brian Branch, number 14, will be taking his spot. Branch, luckily, in the preseason, has played just about every position in the secondary. So. There he is, making the tackle. Yep. And Alakai Moore still upset on the sideline. Coming from the left side, coming off the slot, runs right into the, the play. Good defensive call by defensive coordinator Pete Golding. Get a couple first downs against Alabama, and they will start to bring people off the edges. Well, now they find themselves in a third down and long situation after this drive was going very well. The runs, the passes, and the penalty. Alzada, plenty of time, throws a slant, but it's short of the first down, down to about the 21 yard line. It's going to be fourth down and a long two. You know, you always talk about the importance of accuracy as Jimbo just right there is talking to Zach. You've got a guy that if you throw a strike here, he's going to catch the ball and run for a first down. It's off target, and that leads to not being able to pick up the first down. It's a completion, but not good enough. That's what the great ones do. They lead their guys into the hole, and they make first downs on the throw. Seth Small in for the field goal from 38 yards. Kick on the way, and A&M's got the early lead at home. So Seth Small. His 10th field goal of the season. First time trailing in the last 15 games. It was Georgia last year, the last time the Tide was behind. They're behind by three early here at Kyle Field. Five and seven plays. Just about three and a half minutes to get three for Jimbo Fisher. He has a good record when scoring first. Not what they wanted, Gary, but three is good. <laughs> but, uh, Get whatever you can. The theme that we had for AM to stay in the game was help the quarterback. And I thought the game plan, the blocking of the line, and the calls to get Zach out of the pocket all fit together. Wobbly kickoff. And it goes out of bounds. So good field position for Alabama to start the 35. And that's just giving field position right back to a high powered offense. As we take a look at the Papa John's starting lineups, and it starts with this guy, Bryce Young. 17 touchdown passes on the season, just two interceptions. Very poised. And the rest of the offense around him, and we talked about the big guys up front as good as any place. And this guy, the left tackle, Evan Neal, maybe 
the best in the country and some people around Alabama say maybe he's the best they've ever had at that spot and they've had really good ones and they've had five number one draft choices at tackle in the Nick Saban era first down at the 35 and get a flag down immediately before the snap Jason Autry is our referee Delay a game. Disconcerting signals. So in the Florida game, Alabama playing at Florida, same thing happened. Alabama started out in the first quarter with the delay a game, and they had fall, four false starts in the thing. Now, the play clock looked different on our scoreboard than it did here, and I think we're looking around. There's two of them on each end. He must have missed it. They called the late game for AM calling out signals. Gotcha. And Brian Robinson on a first and five. My fault. I thought it was three. on Alabama. Way off. Here's the Aggie defense. Antonio Johnson comes in, leading tackler fourth, best in the SEC in tackles. Second down at two is Young. Down the middle. That one might have been tipped. It was intended for Mechie. It looked kind of weird. As it got closer to the receiver, I don't know if somebody got a hand on it or not. That's a read route. If it's man-to-man -man covered, Mechie will keep going across the formation. If it's zone, he'll stop. I don't think it nope, was tipped. It wasn't. Just an anticipatory throw by Bryce Young, and Mechie goes one step further than he thought. On a rollout. Young just going to throw short complete to Latu, the tight end, and he's got a first down. This AM defense has a lot of veterans. Eight players that started a year ago. But against Alabama, they give you the whole package. I mean, you could play a lot of football, but they're still, they use all of their weapons on every drive. And they're in Aggie territory, Alabama at the 47 yard line with a first down. Here's a toss, Brian Robinson trying to get to the edge, puts his head down, got about four. I think Latu is going to get called for holding on the play, the right, the tight end. Right after he picked up a first down, he's going to pick up a flag as well. Holding offense number 81. Senior from the previous spot. Repeat first down. So I really felt against Ole Miss that Alabama was going to pound the ball. That was the formation of the defense that just encouraged them with only five in the box. But against this Texas A&M front four, a legitimate front four, I think you'll see a much more wide open game from the Alabama offense. More from number nine in the air. And he's in an empty set, so we're going to see a pass coming up. Not first and 20. Young had pressure, got rid of it, got it complete to Slade Bolden, who's run out of bounds right about back at the original line of scrimmage. or very close. Jalen Jones bumped him out. So they put Brian Robinson out as a wide receiver, and then they shifted to the bottom out here, the receiver, Bolden. And again, perfect timing on the throw. You anticipate throws. Once in a while, you'll be wrong. But when you get good at it, the defense cannot stop you. Second down at 11 at the 48. Robinson. Got it to the 45. He was sensational a week ago. Career highs for B-Rob, as they call him. As he carried the mail and did it to the tune of 171 yards well, and four we, touchdowns. Yes, well, here we go for this AM front four. That's the strength of their team. Third and eight. Can that defensive line make a play? This is how you help the quarterback. That's Bolden in motion. Young will go on a clap or a silent count here. It's silent with the crowd roaring. He's in trouble. Got away. Doesn't like to run, but he will here. And he got a first down, sliding to the 30. <laughs> AM brings pressure. They put the defensive backs, they're playing a nickel, but they only rush four. They drop in a deep zone. And as Ness said, he doesn't like to run, but on third and eight, with that deep of a drop by the linebackers, he took it. That's his career long. Yeah. Well. <laughs> 15 yard pickup. Three runs, three passes on this drive so far. Another pass coming up. 
Comes to his secondary receiver down in the flat is Bolden again. And Bolden got about eight. He's second down and short. Antonio Johnson's been a busy tackler so far in this opening drive, as we told you. Number 27 is always around the football, and he made the stop. So this is about par for the Alabama offense. They've scored on their first 15 drives of the season this year, they've scored 12 times. I mean, they just score in the first quarter. Yep. Detroit L. Williams, who got the call, and he only got about a yard. It's going to bring up third down. Andre White, the middle linebacker, in on the stop. Roydell is the next choice after Byron Robinson, and then it's probably Trey Sanders, and then they're not quite sure now because they lost Jace McClellan to a knee injury and had surgery this week. Start to feel the building shake again. Third down and two. Almost three. Williams in motion to the top. Young looks that way, goes that way, catches May. First down might be made too. Let's see. Richardson knocked him out of bounds. It's going to be a first down, Alabama. Well, Jamison Williams right there, number one. He's the guy that kind of opens up the field with his speed, but again, this Alabama offense giving you a lot of variation and putting their playmakers all over the field, keeping the defense off balance. And you saw Williams just got a foot in front of that first down marker, so they're right at the 20. Young flares it out to Roydell Williams on the fly down the sideline. Touchdown, Alabama. Twenty yards, and that's touchdown pass number 18 for Bryce Young. It's pretty hard to teach this stuff. This is about the most veteran play of a freshman quarterback I've seen in a lot of years doing this. The calmness of him to look downfield and understand where his outlets are. Look, 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 not there. That's not good defense. You cannot give that space. There's no defense alive that somebody busted an assignment that was supposed to have him man to man. That's not a good zone and obviously a terrible man to man look. Will Reichard in for the point after. Up and perfect. So Alabama was behind for the first time in a long time. They've won 45 straight when they've scored a touchdown on the opening drive, and they just did it again. Ten plays, 65 yards. Roydell Williams, a 20-yard touchdown. Pass from Bryce Young, 7-3. Look at the touchdown from our AT&T 5G pylon cam. It's Roydell Williams blasts up and over and in for the touchdown. <laughs> you can work on a lot of handshakes when you score that many. I was just going to think of the same thing. You got to cut. You got to be very creative to think of new ones. Yep. Early quarterback comparison. Zach was three for three on that opening drive. Bryce Young only missed one and got his 18th touchdown pass. Oh, the Aggies offense works again from the 25 yard line. Alabama shows blitz. They come with it. Calzada down the middle. Completes first down. Good toss and catch. And Devon Dimas again. That's his second grab so far here in the first quarter. When we were visiting with Jimbo Fisher yesterday. I was saying, you know, Jimbo, you always throw the tight ends and you love to attack the middle of the field. He says, oh, we're going to attack the middle. <laughs> Just it's did. The trademark of his offense, usually it's tight ends, but they're getting a the receiver inside. Well, they've got a really good tight end in Weidermeyer. He's lined up on the left side of that line right now. Play fake. Throw down the middle again. It's Weidermeyer. Weidemeyer still going inside the 30 and down to the 27. 
Very simple seam route and a really good throw by Zach Calzada that time. Pick up of 34 to Jalen Wattemeyer. Right down the seam route there. And Brian Branch lets him go right by him that time. No safety in the area. Perfect throw. Good timing again. I'd call that a middle of the field throw. Get it in between the numbers. That's where you need to attack. Just outside the 27 of Alabama. First down for the Aggies here with five and a half to go. First quarter. Elzada. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run. And he's got a man. Watermeyer again. Touchdown Aggies. We talked about AM blowing a coverage. Well, Alabama's going to blow a coverage just as badly. Weidemeyer just going to go down the sideline right here, and nobody covers him. Passed off. Nobody stays with him. He's got his arms up for 15 yards in the open area. Extra point by Small is up and good. Jalen Weidemeyer, his 14th career touchdown catch. And the Aggies just flew down the field. 75 yards in three plays. Jalen Weidemeyer says, Zach, get it to me. Calzada says, it's on its way, my friend. 10-7, Texas A&M. Unique shots of tonight's game are provided by the Home Depot. As you peek in at Kyle Field, that just erupted after the touchdown pass from Zach Calzada to Jalen Weidemeyer. And you know Nick Saban's not happy because it wasn't the only guy that was open. Weidemeyer, there no. were other receivers yeah. that were kind of running free as well. When you, we say busted coverage, we mean busted. Really coverage. busted. <laughs> and this kick's going to sail out of the back of the end zone. So this was a condensed formation, all four receivers. And what they're going to do is go four vertical, okay? But they do it from a condensed spot right here. But look what happens. As they go out, if you kind of stop it right there, I mean, you got guys open really all over. You could throw the ball here, or you could throw the ball there. Both of them are wide open for touchdowns. Weidemeyer, the recipient in the corner off that throw from Calzada. So now let's see if Alabama's got an answer. We told you it had been the Georgia game a year ago the last time Alabama trailed. I don't know when they trailed twice in one game. Right. We're going back to the record. <laughs> yes. First down at the 25. Young comes up fire and complete to Williams. He tiptoes out of bounds with a pickup of 10 or 11. Both times Williams has caught the ball. He's picked up first down the yardage out to the 35 this time. Ryan Robinson back in at tailback. Williams in motion. It's Robinson off the left side. Big opening. Broke one tackle. Broke a second. Almost got 10 out of it before they finally put him down. Well, you'd wonder, and we actually asked Mike Elko, do you lean to your right? Because Alabama runs to their left. And he goes, well, we kind of know we're going there, but it's not like we can line up an extra guy. <laughs> right. We're aware of it, but by the way, they're, as Brad told you, they're pretty good over there, too. Second down and one. Play action. Young loads. Scrambles, given ground. Just trying to get rid of it now, and he got it back to the line of scrimmage. To yeah. save it down. He also was throwing it near enough to Latu to get away with it as well, even if it didn't get across the line of scrimmage. Jimbo right now is telling the headlines, but he didn't think it got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, but it was at a receiver, near enough right. to a receiver that it, it didn't matter. Watch 81's right there close enough. Third and one. Timeout, Texas A&M. First charge timeout of the half. Take a timeout with 425 remaining first quarter. We'll take the timeout as well. Aggies by three.
Tomorrow, week five of the NFL on CBS includes a battle in Florida between the Dolphins and the Bucks. Saints take on Washington and a matchup in Los Angeles between the Browns and the Chargers. As always, coverage starts at noon Eastern. JB and the guys will be along on the NFL today. Great slate of NFL games tomorrow right here on CBS. Good game here in prime time at Kyle Field. Third down and a yard. Robinson dropped the ball, I think. Aggies have got it. Texas A&M on the fumble recovery. And it's Leon O'Neill. And that's the first fumble recovery for the year for the Aggies. So it was second and short, and Alabama went for the home run. Had to throw it away. They figure, okay, third and short, we can make it. Handoff is high. He missed the pocket. You got to get it to, in the number. He hit him high in the chest, and Robinson never had the football. Handoff a bit high, and never is able to get it. You know, Bryce Young is so seldom under center. It almost exactly. looked like he was never comfortable when he turned around. He sure didn't miss the pocket. You saw Brian Robinson pick his arms up real high, right. but he expected it lower in his stomach. And as Gary just said, first fumble recovery, only the second loss fumble for Alabama this year. Aggies at the 41. Devon A-Chain on the handoff. A-Chain straight up the middle. He's got a first down to the 30. So we talked about if you're going to play with Alabama, you have to at least tie in the trenches. Let's give some credit to this offensive line. They've got to establish just enough of a running game that when Calzada throws, everybody in the park doesn't know he's going to have to throw the ball. And he's been perfect so far. Six for six for 99 yards and a touchdown. It gives the H hand again. Bounced off one tackler and a powerful run again. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's strong. And another excellent run down to the 23. Well, I think it'd be. Pretty much everyone would agree that there's probably not a better duo of running backs in this league than A. Chain and Spiller. They're home run guys. They pick their spots. They understand the game. They know how to follow their blockers. You know, and and as we talked about, they can go the distance on any play. Second down and four at the 23. A. Chain again outside this time. And another first down run. Down to the 18. Inside three minutes, and the fans are loving it right now. This is where you start to wonder with the mistakes in the secondary, the touchdown pass in particular. We saw the uh, Weidemeyer pass up the seam. You know, Malachi Moore was one of the captains of that defense, right. calling out signals. If you're just joining us, he's been ejected for targeting. Run blitz. A chain runs right by it and almost broke into the second level there. Helms held on for dear life or he would have had a touchdown. Again, running between the tackles. Good job up front. Picking the spots. Henry Toa Toa has a chance, but A chain runs right out of the tackle and gets to the secondary again. Malachi Moore done for the night. Another thing that might not be helping is Drew Sanders. Yeah. The linebackers out. Dallas Turner, number 15, is in the game. I think he's right there. Isaiah Spiller back in the backfield on second down and four. Now it's Spiller's turn. Puts his head down, gets a couple. E.J. Dale made the hit. He brings up third down. So in the Florida game, the Alabama defense had to answer some tough plays and make some plays. I think right now, They've got to help right here. A third and three, a stop would be a big stop for this Alabama football team. Got to wonder what Jimbo's thinking. Would he go for it on two straight downs down here? I'm about to find out if that's needed. Spiller gets behind, tells Otto. Play clock winding down. Just got it away. Spiller up the middle, first and goal at the five. No decision necessary. And you said it. 
up the middle. And what does that mean? They're running right behind true freshman number 61, Foster. Bryce Foster moving Kenyon Green, number 54, to left guard, I think has helped both the center position and the guard position running right up. Should have been a face mask call at the end of that play. They spot it at the six where it's first and goal. Calzada lofts it. Touchdown. When you can run the ball, you can throw the ball. Right here. Right behind the linebacker. Sees their aggressive players. Got to stop the run. Got to stop the run. Nope, not a run. We said when we did the lineups, number zero has got to get involved in the offense. And Aya Smith, he just did. Seth Small's extra point is good. 33 seconds. Calzada's got two touchdown throws. 41-yard march after the fumble recovery. A and M by 10. Queen Latifah returns in the new season of the hit drama. The Equalizer premieres tomorrow on CBS. This place is going wild right now. The Texas A&M leading by 10, and Alabama will bring it out to the 25. Let's check in with Jamie. Zach Calzada is a different young man tonight, and I'm not just talking about what you're seeing on the field. In the bench area, compared to what we saw a few weeks ago against Arkansas in that loss, a completely new quarterback engaged with every position group that he deals with, talking with coaches, smiling. You have to think, Gary, when he was informed that he was the guy this season, that there must have been a shift for him mentally. Yeah, I, I think the more he plays, and when he looked around and said, you know what? I'm getting a little help here. That's all I needed to get comfortable. And I got to give Jimbo credit. Jimbo Fisher has dialed up some play calls in this game. Yep. He's given them some easy targets. Calzada's perfect. Seven for seven, 106 yards and two touchdowns. Let's see if Alabama's got an answer. Bryce Young comes up firing a little bit too far in front of Jamison Williams. Diving attempt, but it's incomplete. So we talked about this Alabama team facing it on the road against Florida, but they were never behind. This time the adversity is the Alabama defense is giving up some points and they look up at the scoreboard and go, we're 10 behind. Right. Second down at 10. Billingsley, the tight end, was in motion there. Bryce Young throws late and out of bounds. And boy, that should have been a flag, I thought. And that was big time hit on the sideline by Tyreek Chappelle and true freshman football player in their ball sailing oh geez got to keep your eye on the ball uncatchable look at where the ball's being thrown the unnecessary personal foul late hit defense number seven 15 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down so they gave Alabama a freebie there and Mechie took the shot in the back Chappelle's first start was last week against Mississippi State, but everybody knew that. Nobody even on that bench is arguing with that one. It would have been third and ten had yes. it not been a penalty. As it is, first down at the 40. That's Mechie in motion to the bottom. Bryce Young looks that way, fires. Mechie's got this one, and he's still on a run inside the 25 and down to the 20. Bryce Young to John Mechie. On a big game. Yeah, he comes in motion and then just keeps going on the wheel. Watch him come across and just go on the wheel right here. Wide open all the way. Nobody there. The safety kind of is waiting for him, and Bryce Young gets him the ball before the safety can make the play. Alabama right back to the edge of the red zone. On a 40-yard pass play. Now Brian Robinson taking it wide. Going left and going 15 more for Alabama. It's first and goal. That's a pretty eventful first quarter here we've had, haven't we? <laughs> a lot of eventful quarters today in college football. For this sure. is one of them. So the second quarter will start with Alabama at the Texas A&M five-yard line. But they find themselves in an odd spot. Alabama, the number one team in the country, trailing by 10.
We start the second quarter with Alabama at the Aggies four yard line first and goal. Brian Robinson's the man that got him to the four. He'll try to take the other four and he only got about two and a half. Second down. By the way, we maybe should tell our viewers we're not used to goal lines that are yellow. Yeah, I, one thing about that last snap before the end of the quarter is you look at this play, the game clock actually hits zero before the ball is snapped. But according to talking to the replay official, it has to be egregious. Who knows what that means? <laughs> Inside the two. Brian Robinson again got one more of it. It's third down and goal. That's the first thing we noticed, right, Ness? The yellow line when we got here. Yeah, and I just didn't want everybody to get confused. Yeah, I know. That was our first down line. I, the goal line. If we have the ball in the ten and a half yard line, it may get confusing. It really might two get yellow confusing. lines. That's right. Third and goal. And now they spread things out. Robinson spread out as a receiver. Now he'll come back to the backfield with Bryce Young. Third and goal at the one. And the Aggies come up with a goal line stand. Young fires. And it's intercepted. Intercepted by Richardson. Damani Richardson, his first interception of the year. Damani Richardson has a man-to-man, -man and he cuts underneath the tight end to make the play. Watch him right here. He's going to cut underneath and aggressively go to make the play. He just doesn't cover it, but he cuts the angle. A spectacular play by Damani Richardson against Billingsley, a fast tight end. That's a spectacular play. And a touchdown saving play, obviously, because that ball would have been caught for a touchdown. He maybe would have wanted to stay in the end zone, but he was thinking uh, 100 yards the other way, and I don't blame him. It was a great play. So take a look at our pylon cam. He runs right by it, so Kinda, they're going to spot it at the four yard line. Kind of reminds me of the game saving interception AM made in 2012 when Johnny Manziel won at Tuscaloosa. Ended the game with an interception just like that. Actually, the three yard line, beg your pardon. Spiller. Isaiah goes out to about the seven or eight backpedaling. Mathis holding on to him. Got him a little breathing room, though, with that run. So, two turnovers, a fumble and an interception here in the opening 17 minutes. You know, the, the fumble is self inflicted, and, and, and that's something you can't have. You know, a championship team, especially at Alabama, that they don't stand for that. But that was a great play. Yeah. P, you got to give people credit for making great plays, and that was a great one. Spiller dances in the hole a little bit, only got about a yard. It's going to bring up third and four. Christian Harris made the tackle, only the third interception. Largest deficit since 2019 against LSU. Remember, Alabama hasn't lost since November of 2019, riding a 19 game winning streak. So, how aggressive does this Alabama defense get? Remember, we talked a little bit about not having one of their quarterbacks on defense, Malachi Moore, out there. Do they try to cover that out by bringing more people and getting the quarterback? Yes, they do. Goes on it. Throws in the flat. Spiller's got a first down out to the 20, and he's still standing. So what is AM? They anticipate and they go hot. Right away. Get the back out and they run right by it. Everybody's got the wheel route. Everybody is successful with it, aren't they? Yep. 14th reception of the year for Isaiah Spiller. Zach Calzada still hasn't missed. You know who else hasn't missed? Jimbo Fisher hasn't missed. Jimbo play has called the perfect game yeah. so far. We said he needed help. Not just the 21 guys, but the coaching staff has to as well. On the 20. Spiller got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Mathis again along with Anderson. And on the tackle. And Dallas Turner also there. The guy that's filling in for Drew Sanders who's out with the thumb and wrist injury. Sanders himself was playing for Chris Allen who's out for the year with a broken foot. So they've lost 
Alabama two linebackers at the exact same spot. And all of a sudden you're playing a young guy. But Turner was involved on that tackle. Second down to two. Everybody bunched in tight. Alzada flares it out. Spiller with the catch, but he's bumped out after just a short game by Jordan Battle. And that's one of the things we had expected in this game. Mr. Jameer Johnson, number 58, would play left tackle, and Kenyon Green, the All-American candidate, would go to left guard. Apparently an injury, but Kenyon Green is out at left tackle, and they had to bring in Blake Trainer, 53, at left guard. Green's played every spot on that yes. line, including the Orange Bowl last year. He played center. center. So. We saw him at right tackle last week, left tackle last week, both guard positions, all in two games. Yep. Empty backfield. Third down and eight. Blitz coming from the secondary. Calzada got rid of it, completed it, but it's short of the first down. Got it to Jalen Preston. And we might have our first punt of the night. When we talked about good plays on defense for AM. That time, Jalen Armour Davis, uh, Davis, number five that time, tracked his guy. You don't have to be too aggressive. You know where the darn marker is. If he catches the ball, make the tackle, force the punt. Good defense. Nick Constantino, you look behind him, the punt. First punt of the night by either team. And JoJo Earls way down there on the other end, waiting for Alabama. Oh, boy. Kick and right to the sideline where Earl makes the catch at the 26 or 7. That's where Alabama will start offensively again, trailing by 10. Here, 17 7. Alabama had driven all the way down to a first and goal at the four yard line before Bryce Young was intercepted by Damani Richardson. Let's see what they do this time. Jamison Williams on a little flip. On the end around, picks up about four. Pretty sneaky little play right there. Alabama shifted the receivers and allowed Jamison to back up and go in motion. He was playing the X receiver on the top of the screen. One of the receivers went up on the line of scrimmage, allowing him to back up and go in motion. Nice little design. Second down at six at 9.45, remaining first half. Young pressure coming from the back side and down he goes they got to him and it's Tyree Johnson that time Chris Owens matched up and he kind of whipped on the outside there's the matchup Owens has got him comes right around the corner fast turn and gets to young beautiful pass right that time by Johnson. That's his second sack of the year, and it forces a third and nine. And on Alabama's last two third down plays, one was a fumble, one was an interception. Third and nine. Billingsley in motion. Crowd is really cranked up. Play clock down to one. Young scans a field. Buys himself an extra second or two, and now he's going to run with it. And he's knocked out of bounds short of the first down, but there's a flag. See if there was a holding on defense. Flags back at the 45-yard line. Usually what it means in the secondary, doesn't it? Holding defense, number 17. The 10 yard penalty is added to the end of the run and results in a first down. And Jalen Jones will give Alabama a first down with the holding call. And Bryce Young breaks out of it. Jalen Jones a good spot, good spot, and then. He got him with both hands. Yep. I'm going to pull him down here. <laughs> Jameson never found his. <laughs> Ability to get back on his feet again. He all got all of that all one. Away, yes. <laughs> First down, the 44. Quick throw out to Mechie on a wide out screen. Williams tried to get him a block, didn't. And Mechie still made something out of it, though, as he got out near midfield. Yeah, this was a decision by Bryce Young. It was an RPO. He had a running play on, or he had the option to go out with the screen. He liked the screen, and he got a positive play out of it. 
We got an Aggie defender down. Can't see the number. It might be Tyree Johnson who had that sack earlier in this drive. Uh, we'll check. And we'll be right back. Tyree Johnson was the injured Aggie came off under his own power though. Yeah coming right from the back side he comes around you can start to see him limp as he goes around Chris Owens as he starts to run here he starts to limp and limp and limp and he said that's enough. <laughs> and he took a seat now he's on the sideline. Hopefully he's all right. Meanwhile Alabama's got a second and five at the forty nine. Both tight ends were thinking about switching. Now Billingsley stays on the right wing. Play action. Deep ball. Young overshot Williams. He had a step back there. I mean, he had a lot of open space. Once AM realized it was going to be the crossing route, they turned and ran, but a perfect throw could have had it. But it needed to be a perfect throw. You could see. The two AM defenders running as fast as they can with their back to the quarterback. Rodell Williams in the backfield has a word with Bryce Young on third down and five. Johnson back in the game. Young, blitz coming. He's going down again. And it's Tyree Johnson again. Guess he wasn't that hurt. He was back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from the left side, and he's matched up against Evan Neal this time. No, they squeezed down. A little bit of a busted assignment that time by Alabama. They turned the defensive end loose. The running back on Tyree, Tyree Johnson that time. That's a bust up front or a design of a protection that wasn't good for Alabama. A running back on Johnson was not a great matchup. Ames burn up in to punt for Alabama's first punt of the night. And Aya Smith waits on the other end, and he's just going to clear out of the way here. Bounces back from the sideline onto the field at about the 26. And so with 7.15 remaining in the first half, 10 point lead still holds for the Aggies. That's time for our hometown connection presented by T-Mobile. Let's check in with Jamie. Fred Spiller doesn't miss a single one of his son Isaiah's games. And while Fred treks all around the SEC, Bryan College Station is the most familiar to him after Fred spent two years playing for the Aggies before injury ended his career. Isaiah actually spent some of his childhood years living on campus as his parents finished their degrees. So it's Isaiah bringing things full circle. And despite A&M football paraphernalia decorating the house growing up, it wasn't his dad who was the ultimate influence to get Isaiah here. It was his mom, Isha, who helped call the shots really a cool young man and a great family story yeah, he really is we had a good time spending time with Isaiah yesterday oh and an interception picked off by DeMarco Helms and that's the first misfire for Calzada and it's a big one I thought with nothing there he was just going to try to throw the ball away but just as he throws it the receiver takes off on him watch nothing there nobody open You've got to play. Just get out of it. Hasn't made any mistakes all day. Covered, covered. Receivers turning up field and lets it go to the back shoulder. There was no back shoulder to throw to. Mental yep. mistake when he least needed it. Helms second interception of the year. As I mentioned, the first misfire by number 10 tonight. Gives it back to Alabama at the Aggie 40. Robinson big hole off the right side. Brian Robinson all the way to the 15 yard line. Well, we talked about it. So far, AM has been holding their own on the line of scrimmage. But this time, they dial up the run, and the line does a good overran that time by Aaron Hansford, number one. Middle linebacker field in the wrong area, and Robinson ran right by him. He ran for 24. This time, he runs for about four more. Andre White made the stop. Nobody blocks the middle linebacker, but overruns the play. Good cutback by Brian. 
but that was the difference in the play. That is Jaden Peavy down for the Aggies. Their super senior. Big fellow defensive tackle. We'll check on him when we come back. The injury was PB, the 315 pound. Looks like he falls on his shoulder, doesn't it, as he goes over the tackle right here, his left shoulder. Now, if he comes back in one play, let's isolate him for a <laughs> That's sack. That's right. Okay? That's what Johnson did. Came back, got a sack. He's in the tent right now, Jaden is. Senior out of Bel Air, Texas. Alabama has worked it to the 12 yard line second down and six blitz coming off the corner young fires end zone incomplete intended for Billingsley so Alabama started the game off three for three on third down end up getting a touchdown since then they've been 0 for three two turnovers on third down so that third down that started out so well has been a disaster yeah. by the way both two of those turnovers were third and a yard one was the fumble by Robinson and then the throw that was picked off by Richardson. Young's in trouble again and he's sacked again. Leon O'Neal. Right. Third down's been a disaster, as Gary said. Mike Elko aggressively brings the strong safety this time. Brian Robinson has him, but doesn't finish him up. Right there, there's the block that should be made. He's got him, takes two of them. Actually, they overloaded the side. He was and had to get rid of the ball. Again, good design by AM. I thought he had the safety, but overload blitz, and they outnumbered Bama. Will Reichard has only missed one field goal this year. It's a 38 yard try and he didn't miss this one. As it draws Alabama back to within a touchdown. 544 remaining. 17 to 10 Aggies. Set it up and be smart being able to run the ball inside. Just a little six yard gain. But what happens afterwards? The linebackers, the safeties respect the run. Boop. Nice and easy. Right over the top. Nia Smith, one of those two touchdowns that Zach Calzada has thrown. The other one was to Jalen Wattemeyer. There's his numbers. Only one miss, and it was an interception. From the 25. A chain all wrapped up for a loss. Tim Smith had him picked off and a loss of a couple on the play Nick Saban has never lost to a former uh, assistant including Jimbo who's 0 and 4 and Nick is 24 and 0 against that group and this drive could go a long way for AM right here remember everything has been going good Jimbo's been dialed in with his quarterback he's a little bit in the head of the Alabama defense matching up here but the last mistake by Zach Galzada can get into the head of the play caller, too. As AM needs this drive, remember, Bama gets the ball to start the second right. half. A three and out here means that Bama could finish the half and start the next half. That's Max Wright, one of the tight ends for the Aggies, who apparently is okay. And you have a lot of confidence. Everything's going well, everything's going good. Quarterback makes a big mistake. Now, do you, you know, what do you grab now? You know, do you have confidence to call that pass over the middle that was going so well for you before? Demas and Anaya Smith both down to the bottom, and now Anaya Smith goes back in motion the other way. Down the sideline. What a catch. A chain. Well. He looked pretty confident there. I, I I know you said what a catch, but I'm going to have to say what a throw. <laughs> <laughs> All out blitz. He knows it's coming. He's got the running back on the wheel route. Let's it go, and boom, like a baton in a track meet. <laughs> Thirty-three yard pickup to the forty-four. <laughs> you can't catch it if it ain't there. <laughs> right. 
So right back in Alabama territory now. Delzado wants to throw back over to Spiller. Spiller broke one tackle, made another guy miss. Isaiah Spiller's going to get a first down out of this. You kidding me? Pick up a 14. So the confidence the head coach had in his quarterback, going with the wheel route, and he performs, comes back, and then what do you do? You get help from your playmakers. Play could have been stopped, but a good running back makes people miss. Toa Toa to begin with, and then he's in the secondary and makes a very positive play. The two guys you profiled in our open, A-Chain and Spiller, make back-to-back -back big plays. Smith, who has been a tailback at times here, it's a couple more yards as the clock winds down to the four minute mark. AM's got two timeouts. AM could just take their time here. No hurry, no reason to hurry up and score. They'd like to score with like a minute. Use the play clock. made the stop on uh, Spiller. And now it's third down and eight. Big play right here for both teams. Third down and eight near the three minute mark. On eight yards or more, they're 0 for 2 tonight on third down conversions. They have been pressuring. Are they going to sit back? Three man line in there. Comes two extras. They pick it up. Galzada down the middle and he throws a strike to Smith to the 16. First down, Aggies. Absolutely. They pick it up. That's the key thing that was said. Remember, the problem earlier for this team was the offensive line, and we saw him against Arkansas get run over by a three man rush. Now you get a five man rush and they hold up on third down. Tremendous job by that young offensive line. Look at the numbers for Zach Calzada. Smith in motion, they'll keep it on the ground. Up the middle is Spiller. Spiller all the way to the goal line. He's in, touchdown. Isaiah Spiller, 15 yard scoring run. Patience, a sprint, and he falls on branch and then stretches the ball over. He would have come down on the one, but he actually falls on the body of Brian Branch and reaches it out. His elbow comes down, but is it the ball over the line? What a run. What a well-blocked play. What a beautiful design drive by AM against this Bama defense. Does his elbow come down? No, I think the ball is there when the elbow comes down. I, I, do think, that, I think that's a touchdown. We look right down the line. Gene's territory is with us. Gene, what do you see? Yeah, I think that actually that was Brian Branch's elbow we saw at first. I think that's a clear touchdown yeah, a touch by Spiller. It's branch elbow go down. No elbows by Spiller. That's a touchdown. Gene, I think we've got you now. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, Gary, Gary nailed it perfectly. What a great job to keep his body and, and arms off of the ground. All that knows of that football has to do is break the goal line, and we can tell from a great angle shot that that is exactly After what video happened. After video review, the ruling is confirmed. Touchdown. I mean, you can't find a part of this play that was not spectacular. Blocked perfectly against, remember, this Alabama defensive line. Look at that. Cut back perfectly. Toa Toa is in the hole, but Spiller dodges across, accelerates, and then hungry for that goal line. And as Jamie said, mom and dad are here. They don't miss a game. They didn't miss a chance to erupt with the rest of the crowd here after that touchdown run. 
24 first half points for the A&M Aggies. 75 yard march in seven plays. Isaiah Spiller does it from 15 yards out. As Gary said, what do we got here? 24 to 10 Aggies. A new home and new projects go hand in hand. With the Home Depot app, you'll pick it up in no time. You can pick up new skills in our Homeowner 101 workshops. Pick up new power tools with a tap. Pick up the things you need at our convenient lockers. Or even pick them up right from your doorstep. Pick up more of what you need so you can do more of what you love. The Home Depot app. How doers get more done. Get ready for bed. Church in the morning. I'm not going. What did you do? She came to me. I mean, I took the ball and ran with it. A new Young Sheldon, Thursday on CBS. The 12th man going wild here. Kyle Field with a two touchdown lead on the number one team in the country. Alabama has got three timeouts, 209 to work with. Don't forget, Adam, BJ, Kevin will have first half analysis and highlights from around the country. And the Geico halftime report. And I'm sure they're uh, as shocked as Nick Saban is right now at what's happening here. Well, if you ever want to trust the process, this is what you have to do. You walk in that huddle and you tell them we've done this all year in practice every day, two minute drill, three timeouts, blank out the crowd, although that may be tough. Yep, hard to do here. And we talked about helping the quarterback. Now these 100,000 fans are helping as well. Young flares it out to Robinson. We had to catch it three times, and here he goes. Brian Robinson down the sideline. Run out of bounds, but he got it into Aggie land. Leon O'Neill pushed him out. At first, I looked to see, did everybody stop when he caught it? Almost one, two, third catch. Yes, just a little bit of a pause that time in the secondary, thinking that the ball might have been fumbled. I thought Richardson just paused a bit. First down at the 46. They go right back to Brian Robinson to the 40 on their back to back catches. Antonio Johnson made the stop. We're down at 140. Clock running. Young. Gonna go deep on the sideline. Mechie can't quite hold on. Antonio Johnson got over there to make the hit. That was a great job by Johnson. He's playing half field coverage. The quarterback scans the field. He knows he's got the verticals to the outside out here. He looks at the safety and says, can he get there? Can Richardson get there? And he does. Ball wasn't perfect, but a good job to the outside by Johnson. Excuse me. Third down. Remember, third down's been a disaster in the first half for Alabama in the last four times they've had the ball. Young down the middle. This one's dropped. Billingsley had his hands on it, but he got hammered, and now we got a flag. All right. We got another look at a targeting here. Damani Richardson. There's three defenders there. Oh, I that, think he hit him with his shoulder that I, time. I too. First look for me is the ball is dropped. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 26. Well, the previous play is under video review. Side of his helmet collided, it looked like. Gene Steratore is with us. These plays for me, guys, are really difficult yep. because this receiver does start to buckle himself in protecting himself from the, in the inevitable contact. The defender also leads with his shoulder. Now, he is defenseless by definition, so contact to his head and neck area could be targeting, but it has to be an attacking fashion. And in my personal opinion, I don't think that that rises to the level of a target. That looks like a good football play. One more angle, drop ball, and Billingsley tries to. So, Gene, the helmets collide. Is there a choice? Can the replay officials say it's incidental because the helmets do collide? What they're going to, the discussion they'll have, Gary, right now is is he attacking with his helmet? Gotcha. Uh, even though, so even though it he's will come more down to that. 
Gotcha. Yes, it'll come more down to to the attacking fashion that he is that he's applying that with, and and we can watch. You see the receiver does crumble, yep. basically getting ready to absorb that contact, which to me is a normal football move by all the people that, you know that are participating. Truthfully, I don't think he launched. He did not leave his feet. David Almond's uh, replay official, Jason Autry, with the call upcoming right now. After a video, video review, there is no foul for targeting. And Damani Richardson says, that's the right call. Fans love it. And that makes it fourth down. Yep. It's fourth down and four. It's a minute 21 to go in the half. Let's see if Alabama decides to go for it. This is not field goal range. And they're going to go. Fourth down for Alabama. They're seven out of nine on fourth downs this year. Number one thing for Alabama right now is protection. They've been having trouble on the left side. We've talked about how cool Bryce Young has been on the road at Florida. He's got to have a few butterflies right now. This is a huge fourth down in the second quarter. They've been faking this blitz, drawing in the tackle, and then attacking from the field. Fourth and four. Gojo Earl, the motion man, and Alabama jumps now down to fourth and long. When we talked about the 12th man, the 100,000, now they've made a play. Everybody getting in the act. You got it. Chris Owens, the right tackle, jumped. Now they have to punt. Started out the game remembering they had four false starts against Florida. That's the first one tonight. Run up to punt. Going to be fielded around the eight yard line by Anaya Smith. You know, there was a Houston touchdown club over the summer, and this was Jimbo's quote We're going to beat his uh, whatever. His Alabama team, is his that what Alabama team? Dodson? Even when he's there, don't worry. <laughs> and uh, that was this summer, and then uh, that was told to Nick Saban. Nick Saban, when they said he says he's going to beat your butt while you're there, and he said in golf, golf, golf. Oh, you mean football? Oh, oh. well, we'll see. But right now, he's got a two-touchdown lead. So, how greedy do they get here, Ness? I mean, you know, you're backed up. You don't want to make a big mistake. Get out of the half up 14. Little screen pass, draw pass to start, draw to start. Yes. And this guy can make a big play in a hurry, but he doesn't this time. Back to the line of scrimmage. Toto to made the tackle on Isaiah Spiller. And we're down to surprise that, surprise that Nick Saban isn't taking timeouts here right now. Remember, he's got a backup quarterback in. They've got all three timeouts. I figured they would take them. So AM's using all of their time as well. Jimbo says, we'll, we'll take that. We'll take a 14. If you said, I'll give you a 14 point lead and you go to the locker room, yeah. you would have taken that on Tuesday. Spiller again. And this time he's wrapped up after a short game. And that might be it if nobody takes a timeout here. It doesn't appear they're going to. Well, a shocker at Kyle Field, a team that has lost. They're opening two SEC games. We're struggling against competition. They felt like they could beat. And here comes the number one team in the country. And at the break, Texas A&M leads by 14. This has not been a fun place for the last couple weeks with the losses. Right. But tonight, couldn't be any better. Let's check in with Jamie. Coach, A&M is marching on offense. What's going on with your defense right now? Yeah, well, we're not playing very well. We're not tackling very well. We're not staying in our gaps. They're doing a good job of blocking us. Uh, we haven't got off the field on third down, so 
Uh, we got to play a lot better. We got to do a lot better, no doubt. A minute left in the half. You didn't call any timeouts. What about that game management? Well, what about it? I mean, if they'd have got the ball back, if we'd have called, we had all timeouts. We'd have started calling them once it got less than a minute. So, but we didn't even make it. We didn't need the time that we have. So. You don't call timeout until there's less than a minute. We had three timeouts, so we were going good. We just got a penalty on fourth down, turned the ball over on the two-yard line, turned it over again, lots of penalties. All these things contribute to not doing well. You got it. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you. I'm surprised he's even smiling there. Well, I don't think he's going to be smiling in the locker room. He, he got into the answer and just kept talking. <laughs> what we do. Yeah, that's what we do for four hours. <laughs> Halftime. Don't forget, New York Studio with Zook and the guys coming up next. Back at Bryan College Station, Texas and Kyle Field. As we're set to start the third quarter, and the hometown Aggies pulling a surprise so far through two quarters, leading 24 to 10. And the 12th man, as Jamie talked about, right back in it. Really never took any time off during halftime either. Bolden and Williams back deep. They'll try to keep it out of Williams' hands, and they do. Well, actually, he fields it, but they'll bring it out to the 25. Welcome back, Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl. I don't think I've ever asked you this question. What's Alabama got to do to get back in the game? <laughs> well, Nick kind of summed it up. They're not. They're playing sloppy football right now. But for A&M, they're making individual plays. They're making team plays, if you've seen on the runs. And the coaches are making plays. The blitzes bother them, well-designed. And Jimbo's calling a perfect game. Everything is fitting together here for this a and football team. I was just kidding around. We're not usually in this position. No, we're not. It's normally the other team that we're talking about trying to come back. Let's see what Alabama does with their opening March third quarter. That's Slade Bolden in motion. They keep it on the ground. Ryan Robinson, no gain. Might have lost a half a yard. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, what do we hear all the time from head coaches? It's about the process and treating every game the same way. Exactly what Jimbo Fisher came out of the half telling me. Every play, take it one yard at a time. And that's what he said to me when they were losing to Arkansas at the half, but they're up against Alabama. He's trying to keep his team calm in this moment. And Bryce Young trying to stay calm in the moment. Empty backfield on second and ten. Quick throw out to Mechie. Mechie. Got about eight. Still going to bring up a third down as we took a take a look at our game trends in the first half. Zach Calzada only missed once. It was an interception. Bryce Young's numbers. He was sacked three times. How look at that, that bottom one. How about that? Fourth game under Nick, trailing by this many. They lost the previous three. We'll see if that holds in the next two quarters. First three third downs good the last five third downs for Alabama not good this one is good Brian Robinson broke one tackle broke a second got out to the 49 Leon O'Neill brought him down there going back to basics block the guys you're supposed to block cut back set up your blockers run through an arm tackle perfect running football by Alabama that time 15 yard pickup for Brian Robinson out to the 48 every coach I've ever had when you're having trouble, they always say, go back to basics. Robinson was the basics last week for 171 yards. You saw his current numbers right now. No gain on that one. DeMarvin Leal. And on the stop. Marv, as most of his teammates call him, All-American. A year ago, All-SEC performer. It's spent some time with him yesterday. Very engaging young man, except when he's out on the football field on that defensive line. Not so engaging then. Second down and nine. Blitz coming. Young has to throw in a hurry. Mechie, the intended receiver. He was dumped from behind by Michael Clemens. Didn't really have anywhere to go with this ball. The blitz timed out perfectly. One of the benefits of having the crowd 
being loud is that the silent count you can time up and they're getting a feel for the silent count for Alabama and they're timing up their blitzes. They got their last third down on a run by Robinson. But See this how the third guards nine. turning around. He's the one giving the signal on the silent count to the center. Young waiting. Now rolling and going underneath the would be tackler. He got it to Robinson and he got a first down. How about that composure? Duck and Chuck. Want time out of the pocket. This was about a six or seven second play from stop to the snap to the time he threw the ball. And to find Robinson after he ducked, that's an incredible calmness and ability to keep his eyes downfield. Yeah, on third and long, they got 16 out of it. Williams joins the backfield. And they're going to flip it out to him. Jamison Williams. Got to the corner, got about eight, the flag down. Yep, it's, I think they're going to get Mechie with a grab with his left hand on the play. Boy, and that's the Marvin Leal down for AM. Defensive lineman who we just talked about. During the run, holding offense number eight. The 10 yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Yeah, he tries to help. Mechie tries to help and then holds with his left hand. See how he holds with his left hand and then he tries to get Johnson with his right hand. And little did he know that it only helped about to the tune of maybe two extra yards and now it's coming back anyway. But Leal's the guy that's down and we'll check on him when we come back. Top ranked Alabama by two touchdowns. DeMarvin Leal is okay. And he'll be coming back in, Jamie tells us, after at least one more play. Meanwhile, Alabama's got a first and 16. They empty the backfield. Roy L. Williams comes out as an extra wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. Bryce Young, here comes the heat again, and down he goes again. Another sack, fourth of the night. And Clemens has his second. You have to give credit defensive coordinator Mike Elko. His game plan is just as good as Jimbo Fisher. You take the back out and he comes with a five man blitz. That's the second time he's freed up either a safety or a linebacker for a stop and a sack on a play. Now Alabama's way back at midfield. There's Mike on the right. Even the early sack by Tyree Johnson was basically determined by a linebacker faking the blitz and then him coming around the short corner. So Johnson's got two sacks. Clemens has two sacks. Second down at 25. This is Williams out of the backfield on the completion. Got it back to the 41. And got to get all the way to the 26 for a first down. So a holding penalty in a second is why they are behind the change so much. They got their last two third downs, but this one's a big one. Yes. And they got that same look. They've got those defensive backs and linebackers right up there. The line of scrimmage. It forces Alabama to shift down a bit, and then they come around the corner quickly. Here they come again. Young's got to get rid of it. Just barely does, and it's incomplete. Harmlessly that's, fouled. That's the game plan, yep. and it's working. And they're not going to have to change it until Alabama adjusts to it. Antonio Johnson got the heat that time. There's four guys that can rush, and you don't know which three are going to. Four that are there, and three different ones come on alternate plays. A beautiful defensive game plan. Brian Robinson did what he could. He got one guy, but he didn't yep. get both of them. Same as before. Remember earlier in the game when I thought he missed the block on the safety? He already blocked one guy. Can't block two. And I have Smith waiting back around the five yard line for Burnup's punt. Come over to the near side of the field, takes a pretty good AM hop back around the 13 yard line. Five minutes into the third quarter, no change in the score. Aggies have the ball back up two touchdowns. 
A&M defense has done is take the talent they have in the defensive line, who are a handful, and then mirror it with blitz package. I can't remember the last time I've seen an Alabama team struggle with the pass rush and the blitz package that we've seen in this game like this. You know, we said to DeMarvin Leal yesterday, we said, you know, nobody's even touched Bryce Young yeah, all right. year, and he's getting touched tonight. Now the Alabama defense comes up with a nice play. Ryan and that, Branch. And that's basically what this Alabama has to do. They have to answer the call. One defense is playing and making plays. They need to give the ball back in good field position to their offense. Oh, boy. Yeah. So Isaiah Spiller. AM. AM has been making the plays in the backfield. Now this Alabama defense gives it right back to him. Nowhere to go. Brian Young was going to be there, and Branch makes the tackle anyway. I don't know if it was that last hit, but it's holding his hip. Exactly. There's the numbers for Isaiah tonight, including that 15 yard burst, the rushing touchdown that put them where they are right now 24. To 10, and there's his family, obviously, mom and dad, uh, concerned. Fred Naisha, who Jamie was talking about. He uh, is a He's special up. talent. Yeah, he is. He's a game breaker and looks to be okay. Branch had him wrapped up, and then some other guys that are coming. Coming in and kind of landing on him, including Mathis. Slow motion, they always, well, they usually look innocent, don't they? And then yeah. you go, whoa. And you realize how big Mathis exactly. is. Exactly, falling on him. <laughs> so A chain will be in there to take his spot in the backfield. They alternate at any rate. And there's where the pass is going. A chain, the sideline. So it looked like Will Anderson had an angle on A chain, but when he tried to get there, A chain just said, "Nope, I've got a speed you don't." Yeah, he's a 10 to 100 meter track guy, so he does have a speed that even Will Anderson doesn't have. Yep, gets to the outside. You know, not a 20 yard play, but good enough to make it third and five or six. Third and five, it is from the 18. Elzada getting some pressure. He's going to try to run for it. Won't get there. Got a yard. It's fourth down. And Will Anderson, that we just talked about, helps on the stop. They tried the same wheel route they hit earlier in the game, but this time Alabama peels with it. The defensive end peels with it. Nowhere to go with the football. Good coverage that time. That's doing the position and the defense the way it's drawn up. It was a busted coverage last time. They did the same blitz, same play. That's JoJo Earl back around the 35, awaiting Constantino's punt. And they block it. Alabama a touchdown. Unless his feet were out, it's a touchdown. Nick Saban's team always seem to come up with a touchdown by something other than the offense, and in this case, their second block punt touchdown of the year. They almost took it right out of his hand. I don't even know the ball got to his foot. I think he had control of the ball before he got to the line. I think it's Briggs that laid out. Uh, uh, Brooks, excuse me. And then yep. possession right there before his knee slides out of bounds. By King Makuda. Under review, but it looks to us like a touchdown. Again, as Gary said, that thing almost just got. I, I don't. I don't think it got to his foot. Does he control the ball? To me, he does. And to me too. How about to Gene Steratore? In my opinion, I'm with you guys. I think the left, or the right knee is down firmly when he does finally secure that ball before it hits the white. Uh, I'm with you on this one and think it's a confirmation of touchdown. Uh, wait the official word but what a big turn of events 
in Alabama's favor if indeed it's a touchdown. Got the lead. The seven with the extra point. You know, I thought Ja'Cory Brooks, number seven, got to the ball before the punter's foot got to the ball from up here. Let's see if it did. I can't really tell. It's so close. I know. And here's the end of the play. And Makuta has got it right there, and then his knee does slide, but at that point, he's got the football. At least that's what we think. Call on the field was a touchdown. So the decision is safety or touchdown. Five point call. Yep. And here it comes. After video review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Alabama touchdown on a block punt. Another reason why it's so difficult to beat this Alabama football team. They've got athletes at every phase. They're geared up to make plays. The playmaker this time is on special teams. Corey Brooks, the man of the hour with the block punts. The extra point is good. And the scoreboard changes quickly. 8-18 remaining third quarter. There's the man that covered it for the touchdown, and it's down to a touchdown lead. Punt for a touchdown here. Make it 24-17. Let's test your knowledge with tonight's Athlac trivia question. In the modern era of football, which three people were head coaches at both Alabama and Texas a and Rikers kick goes down to the three-yard line to A-Chain. And A-Chain's got an opening. He's got world-class speed. He's gone. A chain takes it coast to coast. Touchdown, Aggies. Devin A chain, 96 yards for the touchdown. As you said, once he broke free, no one was going to come close. There might not be anybody else in college football that could have caught him. No, even if they were even with him, he was going to pull away. Well, if he was even, he was leaving. Yep. And that's how you answer a block punt for a touchdown, a kickoff return for a touchdown. Remember, One play later, 31-17. Remember, after the interception by Zach Calzada uh, and the field goal, a and answered with a touchdown. Now, the block punch, they answered with another touchdown in the game. Fourteen seconds between our last two touchdowns. Special teams to special teams, you got speed, and when you complement speed with good blocking, something good that will happen. Here's the key block right here, but look at four guys, five guys to the other side, and that's what increases it. Overload to one side, a great block by Baylor Cup number 88 on the inside, and no one's going to catch AJ. And from our AT&T 5G pylon cam, you see Mr. A-Chain cruising by. Alabama still down two touchdowns now. And they'll start at the 25-yard line. <laughs> they're going, you're a bad man, is what they're up there saying to him right now. <laughs> that speed kills. There's our two scores in the 14 seconds I to mention. So now Bryce Young in the offense for Alabama at the 25.
Play fake. Again, trouble for Young again. He's going to get called for grounding this too, isn't he? That wasn't a fumble, I don't think. I think, I think you're right. I think it's going to be intentional grounding, though. I think he threw the ball, but he's been called. He's going to get called. Well, they're celebrating as if it was a fumble, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Quarterback pressure came from Michael Clemens again. That would have been his third sack. They try to do the bootleg. Read very There's well. There's no foul for intentional grounding your receivers in the area. It's an incomplete pass. Second down. So no harm, no foul at all. Gene? Oh, I thought he was in the grasp and just got rid to, of it. To me, guys, I think once a defender starts to tackle you and you throw a forward pass just to avoid loss of yardage, even though there's someone in the proximity, that is just a forward pass in my eyes to avoid loss of yardage. I would have liked to have seen intentional grounding yeah, on the play. I, I happen to agree with you on that one. Obvious was obvious what he was doing. Well, they get a break. It's just a second down. Slade Bolden in motion. This crowd is deafening right now. Blitz coming. Brian Robinson trying to run by the blitz, and he does. Brian Robinson across the 40. Takes tacklers out to the 48-yard line. So you got to do it right. When they blitz, you got to make a play. Darian Delcourt, the center this time, makes the play. He hits the blitz, snaps it, bang! Just walls it down, goes behind Big Evan Neal, and you crease it into the secondary. And that puts Brian Robinson over 100 yards with a 23-yard pickup to the 49. This time, no game. Invesco brings you tonight scholar athletes for Alabama Chris Owen Seth Small for Texas A&M Invesco is proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of thousand dollars to Alabama and Texas A&M's general scholarship funds. There's Chris Owens. Second down and 10 at the 49. Lordell Williams will flush out of that backfield as an extra receiver. Here's that look to the left again. And that's been trouble for him tonight. There's nobody to block for Bryce Young. He got rid of this one, though. A little bit high to what caught. Catch. And Jamison Williams with a big catch. Just as he caught that, he got collision. Holding on that ball when you're getting hit like that. Tremendous job holding on a great strength in the hands there by Williams. One of the first big plays he's come up with tonight at the 32 yard line. Alabama's last six possessions now one field goal, three punts, and two turnovers. That's unheard of almost. Here is Williams. Gets his head down and crosses the 30 to the 29. Again, remember, he's getting more work behind Brian Robinson because Jace McClellan injured his knee last week. And had surgery on Tuesday, so he's done for the year. Robinson back in on second down at seven. Man coming. Young's going to air it out near sideline for Williams. He's got it. Touchdown, Alabama. Jamison Williams, two big plays on the drive, including a 29 yard touchdown catch. All right, you live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. This time it came pressure, but Bama picks it up. And then down here, stutter and go. Stutter and go beautiful. Right on the money. You don't have time if you don't pick it up. You brought Richardson that time from the secondary, and that time Bama did their assignments and made them pay on the blitz. Rikard's extra point is up and good. What a third quarter we got going. And we still have five and a half to go. 75 yard drive and six plays. The capper, Jamison Williams from Bryce Young. 31 24, Aggies. And his second touchdown pass of the night gives him 19 for the year. And that does quiet the crowd as Jamison Williams puts the shush shine on the. Uh, 
folks at Kyle Field. A chain in there at the tailback spot. We don't know about Isaiah Spiller. He had a little bit of a hip injury earlier. Here's Calzada throwing to no one. He got a flag down though, and maybe Josh Job was caught holding. It was thrown right at him. Well, and Jimbo Fisher was clapping to the officials. We we met with him yesterday. Holding defense number 28. And Jimbo went on about a five-minute rant. Would you call it a rant? Yeah. Diatribe. Or <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> exactly. About how they hold in college. They do everything. They hold, they hold, and they get away with it. <laughs> he says they hold on every play. Exactly. And he, Jimbo came out clapping. <laughs> Let's get an update on Spiller with Jamie. Spiller stays on the sideline right now, guys, with a bruised tailbone. He was out of the medical tent, and he came over to congratulate A-Chain on that 96-yard touchdown, but he still is on the sideline. Okay, Jamie, thanks. There he is trying to warm up and try to get that hip loosened up. Here's the throw out to A-Chain, looking for a block. Alabama does a nice job bringing him down at about the 38-yard line. A little earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question, which was modern era from 1950 on. Three people that were head coaches at both Alabama and Texas A&M. The Bear, Gene Stallings, and Dennis Francioni. There they are. It's a good one. Mm-hmm. Calzada talking to all his linemen here, second down and six. At the 39. Little toss to Nia Smith. Alabama trying to stretch it out, and they do. And a flag goes down. He might have a holding on top of a one-yard loss. And that's how you play defense right there. That's how you, what they call setting that edge. You string your guy out. You let those defensive backs come up and help you. But that front defensive line, that time it was Brian Young, number 47, just kept his holding hands on the offensive offense, lineman. Number 55. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Two feet second down. Kept his hands out there and forced Kenyon Green right there to grab at the last second. Kenyon Green's their best lineman. Yep, he grabbed Toa Toa on the play. Did you see that? He's blocking one guy and he reaches out and grabs Toa Toa <laughs> on the play. Henry's been a little quiet in this game, don't you think? Yeah, he has. He had a great game last week. <laughs> Toto at number 10, the middle linebacker, transfer from Tennessee. So second down and 16 now. AM hasn't been behind the chains quite this deep all night. Calzada airs it out, got a man, but he overshot him. Incomplete, intended for Moose Muhammad. Good job that time by Brian Branch. Did not get a player laid out, didn't take an unnecessary hit on it, didn't get a, a targeting or a penalty. Quarterbacks tonight have been sharp. 15 of 17, two touchdowns. Bryce Young over 200 throwing again with two touchdowns. Each have been intercepted once. Well, Jimbo Fisher said sooner or later, I mean, he's showing it in practice, that goes out is. Sooner or later, it's going to show up in the game. It's been this Saturday. Zach set the throw again. That looks too high for Weidermeyer. And Weidermeyer, I think, probably would have gotten to the first down marker, but that one just sailed on him a little bit. Yeah, and that's where the Alabama defense was rushing just three men, dropping back eight, just forced the throw to the side of the field. Even if it's caught, it's not even going to be close to a first down. Eight man drop. Remember how uncomfortable Zach Calzada was against Arkansas with that eight man drop. Right that time he took the easy throw and good defense by Alabama. Constantino to punt. One of the top 10 punters in the country, averaging almost 48 yards a kick, but a flag down before the snap, though. The last one he didn't hit 48 yards, that's for sure. It went the other way for an Alabama touchdown. Ball start. Kicking team, number 45. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. He may be readjusting a little bit on that front wall, knowing that the last one got stuffed. And they don't want that to happen again. As you see, the center and the punter are not in alignment at all. It's a sideways snap. Yeah, they angled to the right. This one he gets away cleanly. And not a very good punt, though. It goes out of bounds around the 39-yard line. Let's see if they walk it up. It's going to be around the 39 or 40-yard line. 
Oh, they're still coming. This one went out of bounds at the 43 yard line. Wednesday on CBS CSI the global phenomenon begins a new chapter in the city where it all began new science new mysteries and a new threat to the next generation of crime scene investigators CSI Vegas uncover the truth Wednesday at 10 9 central on CBS and allowing 30 or more a 500 record which is unsaving like they've allowed 31 but they've scored 30 or more themselves in 31 straight games and that's what they're looking for now is to get back to 31 themselves Brian Robinson on the carry so when you become a good offense you want the other team to blitz because you know you can put big plays against them now what does Mike Elko do he's had their number but they burned them last time Jaleel Billingsley has been a quiet receiver tonight. He's the tight end number 19 on the left side. That's John Mechie in motion. And they're just going to ride Brian Robinson here for a while. Got a couple more. Well, there's a guy that knows about beating Alabama. Former Heisman Trophy winner, Johnny Manziel in attendance tonight. Third down and a long two. Williams in motion, stop, starts. They might flare it out to him. They're going to go the other way. And they got it to Mechie on a crossing route. Mechie's got a first down inside the 40, down to the 38. When you're lucky enough to watch these teams practice, you'll hear coaches always say, remember your crossing route. If your guy isn't open for the big play, they wanted a wheel, remember your crossing route, and it's exactly what he did. Perfectly in stride. First down at the 38-yard line. Back to the ground, a Robinson cut back, taking tacklers with him for eight. Brian Robinson becoming a load. Remember, 36 carries, 171 yards last week, and he's got 17 carries for 119 right now. Under two minutes in the quarter. Second down and two. On the throw complete Williams first down inside the 20. So number one becoming a factor here in the yeah, third quarter. Those condensed formations starts out real close. Dunks the speed out that time that makes it a little shorter throw for the quarterback and Bryce puts it right there. Six catches now for Jamison Williams. Back in the red zone at the Aggie 17. Yeah, that didn't look right. That didn't look right at all. And whistles will blow it dead. Felt like it was a slight start snap. Of the snap. False start. Offense. Number 70. Five yard penalty. First down. Felt like the center was late. Everybody was moving, but Delcroix just a hair late on the snap. Alcourt has had some snap problems, issues, if you will. Yeah, he the was shotgun. Shot. They worked on it all week, though. He's they much were, better today. That's right. He's been very accurate. First and 15 now. Outside the 20 at the 22. Young. Pressure throws complete back inside the 20. And Treshawn Holden with the catch. 106,815, the second largest crowd in Kyle Field history. We told you it might be a record breaker, very close to it. And they have been vocal all night long. Amazing close. Probably the final play of the third quarter upcoming. Bryce Young, empty backfield.
on second and 12. Goes to the end zone, overshot Mechie, incomplete. And that does bring quarter number three to a close. Yeah, that was really good coverage that time by Keldrick Carp for number 14. Nowhere to go with the ball. There's been some crazy games in college football today. You might have seen a couple of earlier ones. We've got one as well. You don't want to go away. Fourth quarter coming up. Well, the building is swaying again. We head into the fourth quarter at Kyle Field. 31-24. Texas A&M in front. Alabama trying to even things up to start the fourth at the 20-yard line. Third down at 12. They need to get to the seven for a first down. Two years ago, they trailed in the fourth quarter to Auburn and lost that game. Bryce Young steps up, fires complete, but it's short of the first down to Mechie by about a yard, I think. Oh, decision time here, huh? Good coverage on the play. Mechie comes back to the ball. Perfect throw. Can't cover it any better than that by Chapel. And Nick Saban said, let's go for three. Little bit outside. You know, if it's a yard, I think maybe two and a half. A lot of time to go. Yep. I like the decision. Will Reichert has only missed one field goal in his Alabama career. That was earlier this year. He's already hit tonight, though, from 38. Trying to make it a four-point game from 26 yards away, and it's up and good. So, Alabama scores 14 and change to play, 31-27. Some huge plays in this game. Field goal has cut it now to four. 31 27 with most of the fourth quarter still remaining. And the numbers continue to pile up for both the quarterbacks. Zach Calzado trying to stay warm. He's had a big game tonight, a breakout game, if you will, for him. That guy electrified the crowd. A chain with a 96 yard kickoff return for a score. Some streaks on the line, 19 straights, the longest active streak in the country on the winning side for Alabama. Nick Saban's never lost to a former assistant. And 100 straight wins against unranked teams. AM's not playing like an unranked team. Uh, remember, they started out the year ranked sixth. Now, they lost their quarterback. And it's been a disappointment, but you can see they've got talent. So, Reichert's got it teed up. The sideline still fired up. And a near record crowd that still has not taken their seats and won't for the next 14 minutes and nine seconds. I can guarantee you. And HM will take a knee this time, bring it out to the 25 yard line. We haven't been in a situation like this in a close game in the fourth quarter with Alabama. I don't know how long, partner. <laughs> well, here to me is the story in the third quarter, AM couldn't rush the ball. Two rush attempts, minus two yards. They only had six plays. Alabama had 24. Right. You know, they don't substitute that defensive line in them much. That could be wearing them down for this fourth quarter. Well, let's see what the Aggies do now offensively. Feels like the pressure is shifting, but they can't run the ball back to the quarterback. Got a two or three for A-chain out of there. Remember. Isaiah Spiller was trying to warm up on the sideline after having that uh, bruised tailbone, as Jamie said. But remember, we tied everything to the success of the running game. Yep. Well, Isaiah's got his chin strap snap, so maybe he can come back in and help the cause. Second down at seven. Blitz off the corner. Calzada rips it down midfield, intended for Weidemar way over his head. They're looking for a flag, and they finally got one late. Gordon Battle says I didn't do anything. Weidermeyer says he did. 
thought he got his hand on his hip a little bit. I don't know if he turned him enough, but it was there when the ball was thrown. Pass interference, defense number nine. So he got ball his hand right around the, the stomach foul, area, just as the down. ball was sliding by. Wasn't really a stop sign, more like a yield sign yeah, right there. Yeah, just kind of a, just a turning <laughs> action. So that moves it out to the 40. Anaya Smith crosses the field in motion, and he's going to be the recipient. Drop the ball, incomplete. Smart play by Anaya Smith right there. He didn't know if that was a forward pass or a fumble. He right. scooped it up, not letting it lay there. They called it an incomplete pass. Here's the two guys we talked about back at the beginning of the broadcast and what they can bring to the table, and they have done their part. They're going to need both of them. Or they're going to need a chain to carry the load if Spiller can't go. But now it's second down and 10 here at the 40. Both wideouts to the right of Galzada, and that's where the pressure is coming from. He avoided it. And now he's going to throw deep. He's got a man out there. Oh, oh just oh. over the outstretched arms of Anaya Smith. Well, you can see why this guy was recruited by an SEC school. That was almost a 60-yard throw on the run. Gets it down to the nine-yard line. He threw it from his own, what, 38 or 9. On the run, what a throw. Just that close, too, to his... Number one wideout, just over the fingertips of Anaya Smith. <laughs> big, that was a big time arm right there. Now they spread things out. Receivers to both sides. Widemeyer, the tight end, is a slot man. Going to have to hurry on the play clock. Just got it away. Calzada rips it down the middle for Widemeyer, and it was in and out of his hands. Good job by Battle defensively, and it's fourth down. So the Alabama defense has been answering the bell in the second half. No running game to speak of by AM. Forced negative plays. They've had a pass interference on a first down, but so far this Alabama defense has been in charge. You saw Weidemeyer tapping his helmet. He thinks yep. he should have had that, and he probably should have. Maybe six inches to a foot high, but you're hoping. Remember we said, how about a little help? Yeah. That would have been a little help right there. Been a lot of help. Constantino blasts this one down, but it's returnable for JoJo Earl. Made one man miss. Earl trying to get to the far side to the edge. Nice return out to the 32, maybe the 33-yard line. Isaiah Rakes ran him out of bounds. Yeah, that was a good play by Rakes. He's a defensive tackle, and he made a big tackle there. Near miss to Weidemeyer. Alabama on offense when we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS. Sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Papa John's. Wheels up. And by the Home Depot. Don't forget, coming up, before we're done, it's a play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Got a lot to pick from. Yep, this AM defense now needs to help out. The plays are starting to mount up. They need to get off the field here. A long drive is going to tire this front four out. 13-06. It's 24 to 10 in the second half. Only 10 offensive plays for AM. Ryan Robinson, left side, blasts his way for about 10. Or very close to it. McKinley Jackson made the tackle, but not before Brian Robinson with another good game. And we've got an injured. Aggie down, I think it's Tyree Johnson, who's been on the deck a couple times tonight, and he's also had two sacks. This time holding his right ankle or foot. His running mate there, Clemens, also has two sacks tonight, and he's there to have a look. When they want to run the ball, they go left behind 
the All-American Evan Neal. Watch what he does here. Cohen inside guard gets to the linebacker and gash him. And that was who Tyree Johnson was trying to play off of was the big left tackle 6 7 350 pounder. No, not advised. No. One there. Blacksburg great one going here. And Bryan College Station 31 27. Alabama second down and a yard at their own 41. Do they just keep trying to pound the ball? It's been Brian Robinson again when he's pounding, and it's Brian Robinson again, and he got it. He came out the backside of that group of maroon Aggies, including Leal. They've been going left. This time they tried to go left, cut back, just enough for the first down. First down at the 43. Slade Bolden in motion. Young is going to run again. And he got it out to the 48. Aaron Hansford made the tackle. You know, now since the injury, Brian Robbins has begun to go to guys. Starts to remind you of the guys back in 2015 when. Derrick Henry and under Nick Saban that's been the workload is Robinson going to have to be the guy the rest of this season to carry the load Derrick did all of that in one year here's a throw out to Williams Jamison Williams still breaking tackles they finally got him wrapped up at about the 34 yard line so he has really come to life in this second half good block that time by Billingsley number 19 Quick screen to the outside. Great block to the outside by Billingsley. And then Williams will not go down. Until he got 18 yards to the 34. Young. Whoa. That one just took off on him and hit the dirt way before it got to Bolden, the intended receiver. I don't know if that just slipped out of his hand or what. I don't know if it if he saw hopper. somebody just as he was getting rid of the ball. Did he somebody flash in front of him? Did he want to hold on to it? Was that one? <laughs> was a one hopper. Yeah. Second down to ten. A and M second half. Not much to show. Yep, that's the story. That Alabama defense. And these plays have been mounting up. Nick Saban called timeout. Saw the play clock coming down. And he wanted to be sure they did not get a delay. He'll have a word with his quarterback. We'll see what they come up with with 11 minutes remaining. Alabama hosting Texas A&M for the first time ever. Four-man Alabama rush. Got him. No, no they didn't. Oh, my gracious. Yep. How about that? Throws. It's a catch. It's a touchdown. Fourth and goal. He's throwing. It's intercepted. Lightning in a bottle in Tuscaloosa. That was the upset engineered by that gentleman. Still taking bows. Here at Kyle Field. Bryce Young is maybe the Heisman favorite right now for Alabama trying to engineer a comeback. Quick throw to Mechie. Blockers in front. Mechie broke a tackle. He's got the first down. He's down to the 20. Wow. One yard throw and a 10 yard gain. RPO. This was a run or a pass. Offensive line is blocking a run play. Bryce has the option to go out wide. Everybody does a good job. Slade Bolden does a good job. Number 18 blocking on that play. See if they go back to Robinson now. That's the case. Brian Robinson tripped up. Got about three. Leon O'Neill put him down. And we'll be down to 10 minutes roughly on the next snap. Remember that first running play? Evan Neal was blocking Tyree Johnson, number three. 
He has not been back in the game since then. His, their best pass rusher tonight. They move Leal out there right now on that side. Second down and seven. Young rips one. Touchdown, Alabama. Lot two. Oh, did they not call it a score? Called it incomplete, I believe. Yes, they did. Well, he had it momentarily. And that was a bullet. Catches it. One, two. Didn't oh, control it. I guess not. Boy, I thought he had two steps. Are they going to look at that? One, two. Isn't bobbling it, but then drops it. Doesn't finish the kiss, I guess. Nope, dropped it. I think that's a good call. Third down. Last look was the cleanest. Jamison Williams crosses the field, comes down to the right side. Now flags flying all over the place. Delay a game. Disconcerting signals. Defense. Second time Number tonight. One. Time. Five yard penalty remains third down. Well, I haven't seen that once in five years, and we see a two in one game. I wonder if that they're clapping because they think Alabama's going on a clap. I wonder if it's that they're clapping and that's what's being called. At any rate, it moves it down to a third down and two. And you do see Johnson is back in the game, number three. It's a big difference now because yes, it you is. can maybe just go to Brian Robinson, who's been pretty dependable on picking up short yardage. Well, they got the numbers to run left right here. Oh, now they don't. They switched it over. They're going to throw anyway. In the flat caught by Robinson. And he's still backpedaling inside the five. Watch this dead flat-footed throw by Bryce Young. Doesn't know where he's going to go. Looking over the middle. His feet. And then just flat-footed, he just throws it at the last second. Almost like a second baseman with a guy sliding at him in his stomach. And Robinson doesn't go down easy whether he runs it or catches a pass. First and goal at the three. Flare it out. John Mechie trying to get to the edge. Not going to get there. Nice job by the Aggie defense. Chappelle and Johnson stretch it out and make yeah, the hit. The, the true freshman Tyreek Chappelle does a great job that time fighting and staying in the game. He's a bit outnumbered, but he takes on the block by the tight end and makes the play. Is that a good job by a corner? Takes on a tight end and makes the tackle. They're really raising havoc down there in the cadet corps, noise-wise, for the Alabama offense. Second down to goal. Young. Fires in and out of the hands of Billingsley. He got one hand on it. That was it. I think Leon O'Neill thought he maybe got a ricochet and an interception. I think the two receivers, the Alabama receivers, ran in each other on the play. And that's what caused a little bit of the kind of took his eyes off the ball. Twelfth play of the Alabama drive. Third down and goal. Lost his concentration. His own guy ran into him. From the four. Young. Incomplete intended for Bolden. Fourth down. He was open, but it would have taken a perfect pass. One on one. He's in the slot right here. He knew he was going there the old way. Old way. Good coverage. Would better have to be a good pass. It was not a good pass. Alabama will go for the field goal to make it a one point game. Their defense has played exceptionally well in the second half. Nick Saban's thinking with nine minutes to go, we got plenty of time to get it back, and then we'd only need a three. Rockard is hit from 38 and 26. This one's from 22. And it's up and perfect. And remember, AM has only run 10 plays in the second half. 
Will Reichert has cut it to a one-point Aggie advantage. Kentucky has beaten LSU, so that'll be a battle of unbeatens in the SEC East between the hedges next Saturday. Here's a big opening, and it's Spiller who's back in there. Isaiah Spiller. Nice pickup, about four. AM's possessions this half. Block punt. 96 yard kickoff return for a score. Another punt after three plays, another punt after four plays. And there's the discrepancy Gary was talking about in number of plays and time of possession. They're nursing a one point lead with eight minutes and 15 seconds to go. Calzada throws incomplete. I thought that was good defense. Fans uh, reacting there on the intended pass to Demar Smith. Yeah, DeMarco Helms read that all the way, ate it up. No real place to throw the football on that one. Well, here's the biggest third down for Absolutely. the Aggie offense. Absolutely. Gonna go with a bunch set. Trips to Calzada's right. Weidermeyer, the tight end. Is the receiver on the left side? He wants to go to the right. Fires incomplete. And Aya Smith, the intended receiver. Josh Job was covering. And it's fourth down. Oh, and Aya Smith kind of doesn't feel like he's going to get the ball. Kind of just standing there, made it easy on Job that time. Job kind of hit him on the hand. The ball was getting there, but no call. And now it's time to punt. Constantino to kick. High snap, he handled it. High lazy kick. JoJo Earl camps under it at the 21 and goes down immediately. Nice coverage by the punt team. But Alabama's got it back, trailing by just one. Again, great job by the Aggies to get down there and drop him basically as soon as he caught it. CBS Tuesday from executive producer Dick Wolf comes a new night of television, FBI, FBI International, and FBI Most Wanted. These elite teams will prove that justice has no borders. Three teams, one night, new episodes Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Remember, you start thinking... You've been pounding them. You have the advantage. Can Alabama take advantage of all these plays? Robinson for about five. Remember, Alabama took a timeout the last time they had the ball when they had the clock winding down. So they've got two left. And we're going to be down under seven and a half minutes on the next snap. Second down at six. Bryce Young up to the line. Here they come. Young fires in the middle. Mechie had his hands on it but couldn't hold it. Jalen Jones was covering. Good job picking up the blitz again inside. Mechie's open and drops it. So Alabama has basically dropped a touchdown pass and now a first down pass. Third and six. The 12th man trying to make it impossible for the Alabama offense to function. Billingsley in motion across the field. Got to hurry. Young, trouble. I don't know if they ever got that playoff. I wonder if they have a timeout again. Texas A&M. First first time timeout of the half. This and it's Texas A&M that out. took the timeout. Did not feel good about the third down defense and said, let's regroup. So both. Teams had an opportunity to do just that. Regroup. 
Third down and six. They need to get to the 28 for a first down. Young fires in a crossing route, and he's got JoJo Earl for the first down. And that quiets the crowd. A true freshman in the game for a key play. Stacked to the top of the formation, comes in on a slant, and it is a perfect throw. It's only his 12th catch of the year, but it's a big one, good for 18. And now it's Brian Robinson cutting to the outside with a stiff arm. And they got a good gain out of it. And Tyree Johnson has been down a couple times tonight, stretched out to make the stop. Not before he got to the 45. Down to six and a half minutes. Second down, almost six to go. Young steps up in the pocket. It's going to go deep. Incomplete intended for Earl. And it was Jalen Jones covering. Yeah, nothing to go. They're trying that long crossing route from one side. The receiver lines up to the right, goes all the way across the field to the other side. Pretty well covered on the play. Nowhere to go to put the football. Right down the middle of the field. The corner falls off on it beautifully. Nothing there. Another third down. Young throws to the outside, complete to Williams. Jamison Williams, another first down. And Brian Robinson does more than just run the ball. Watch him on this one. Number four coming across to get the pickup and allow for the throw. Comes across, stabs him just enough. Perfect timing again. Bryce Young throws before the receiver leaves his cut. Put Under Jamison pressure. Williams over 100 yards receiving. Back to the ground. Back to Brian Robinson. Going forward to the 38. First downs at the 34. Remember, they only need a field goal for the lead. Right down the middle, Jamison Williams still running. Williams inside the 10. First and goal, Alabama. I'll tell you, you just can't do it any better than this. We talked about he might have missed that throw to Bolden earlier, but he's put that one right on the target. Little play action fake and a quick trigger. Reads it perfectly and delivers it as well. And now wide open Williams on the sideline. Touchdown, Alabama. Nobody over to cover him. Alabama win in a hurry. I don't know where, where they it was close to not even being set on the play. Nobody home up to the top of your screen. Jamison Williams takes a knee and takes a touchdown. Well, boy, I tell you, I didn't think Evan Neal was set on the play. He was going down into stance as the play was snapped. Watch Evan Neal, left tackle, go down right as the ball's being snapped. I thought that should have been a legal procedure. Well, right now, Alabama's going for two. They've got four receivers to Bryce Young's left. They're a man short on the offensive line, I think. Yeah, Chris Owens thought they were just going to kick the extra point. Trying to make it a touchdown difference. Young, quick throw again. Jamison Williams again. And it's good. The Bryce Young to Jamison Williams show on that last series. Well, you got to give again Alabama aware. Nobody covers Jamison Williams once. And then look at that execution on the back shoulder fade for two points. Perfect delivery, spins around and catches it. Jamison Williams coming right at you for the two point conversion. And Alabama's gone from being in a hole to being up by a score with exactly five minutes remaining. 
Let's go back to the touchdown, and we're going to bring in Gene Steratore with us. Gene, give your call of this. Yeah, guys, when you take a look at this, when the offense comes up to initially get set before each play, they must be, all 11 players must be set and still for one full second. If we watch this play in real time, we can see, as Gary alluded to, I believe it's the left tackle is still getting down into his two-point stance and basically moving at the time of the snap. That is a legal procedure and should have been a foul uh, for them. They were, there was movement. He was kind of wiggling the whole time, but boy, how about AM not finding a receiver on the play? So Alabama just went 82 yards in nine plays, just under three minutes. They not only get a touchdown pass, they get the two point conversion. And now Riker kicked it out of bounds, which doesn't help Alabama's cause. They'll bring it out to the Aggie offense at the 35 yard line. Wow, we've had a little bit of everything. Sure have. An egregious mistake by AM. They didn't get away with it. They thought maybe the procedure could get them away with it, but they did not. So on that last drive, it was that 31 yard dart that Bryce Young threw to Jamison Williams, and then a seven yard touchdown to him, and then a two point conversion as well. 45 to 13 plays in this half. That's on pace for a 90 play game when you go 45 plays in one half. Five minutes remaining in regulation. Calzada. Down the middle. Got it to Anaya Smith. And he's out across the midfield stripe to the 48 yard line of Alabama. Plenty of time to take the easy throws. No here, hurry here at all. Nice stop route. Puts it right on the number. Beautifully designed play. That's the first first down for AM that wasn't by penalty in this half. Alabama trying to win a 20th straight game. AM trying to beat a number one team. Nick Saban trying to keep that string going against former assistants. Calzada trying to survive here and incomplete, broken up by Toto, the middle linebacker. On the pass intended for Weidemeyer. It was a great job of doing your assignment on that play. Henry Toa Toa has the tight end. Even though the quarterback's under duress and finding, trying to find someone, Toa Toa goes right for his assignment and never wavers. So second down and 10. And the crowd's a little bit more quiet right now with their offense out there, hoping that they can do something. In Alabama territory, Watermeyer, the tight end, will shift sides. Calzada down the middle, completes it. Umpire trying to get out of the way of Jalen Preston. Ooh, big hit at the end of that play, and Preston lost his lid. They board the is there a flag down. There is. I think it's going to be on a board beyond just coming in and crashing the play at the end. We'll see. I thought the play was still going on, to be honest. With I you. did too, but I didn't know if there was a right. whistle or not. But it's pretty loud in here to hear a whistle. It looks like he still was fighting on the play. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 92. The previous ah. players under video review. It wasn't a late hit, it was that he lowered his helmet, is the call. Well, they're going to take a look at this. See number 92 come in at the end. We had one targeting taken away by review tonight already. Again, it wasn't crown of the helmet, but it was the face mask to the helmet. And Gene, we're going to bring you in again. Take a chance on this one, Gene. Yep. This guy, this is a wrinkle for me, guys, is now is the player being held up long enough that his forward progress has almost stopped, which doesn't really put him into a defenseless category, but he is he is getting to that place where now an unnecessary hit to the head or neck area could be deemed to be a target. 
he becomes somewhat defenseless when he's being held up in this situation before being brought down and then you have an unnecessary shot to the head or neck and in, in, uh, in the way that we're just seeing it right now that's what they're reviewing right. I don't think that it falls in that category but it is very tight on this play there's a call after video review there is no foul for targeting the result of play is third down you know the other thing to take into account and maybe made it look worse is his helmet came off. Yeah but I, I, I thought he was still fighting on the play to gain more yards. Watch it's not stopped. It's not stopped. I think Gene kind of laid it out. I mean he he was still fighting in my mind. I like the no call. There. I agree with you Gary that that's also when slow motion can distort yes, what yes. reality is too and I think that may have been the case as we watch the replays. So it's third down at the just inside the 41 yard line of Alabama. And now you're thinking if you're Jimbo Fisher on the sideline going if we don't make it here do I go for it on fourth down right now. A chain is behind Calzada. They'll give it to him and he got the first down. No decision to be made. Move the sticks for the Aggies. And we're under four minutes. Eyes that time, nice patience. It's third and two or three. He doesn't just hit the hole going full speed. He waits and then darts into the open crease. I think we're now officially into four down territory, though, with the clock the way it is. And I think two timeouts. Yes, you're calling plays with four downs. Delzada throws into some traffic and he stuck it in there to Weidemeyer first down. Well we saw the strength of his arm when he threw that long ball down the sideline. But this one he guns into Weidemeyer. Remember his upset missing that other one. He couldn't miss that one. Right between the eight and the five. Just outside the twenty five. First down Texas A&M. The three minute mark. Toto is coming on a blitz. Calzada going to go deep to the end zone. He's got a man. Touchdown, Anaya Smith. Twenty-five yard strike. Calzada paid the price. He's still down, and it might be bad. He got hit right in the knees as he let that ball go. He waits, he waits, he waits, and then oh. he gets rolled up in his left leg just as he lets a perfect pass for the touchdown. Blitz, man to man, he knows it. Does he have enough time? Just enough to and throw a, a strike. And a perfect throw to number zero, and Aya Smith. Got the matchup he wants. His wide receiver on the safety, Brian Branch. Lozada up. Jimbo Fisher out there wanted to give him a fist bump, but right now they're going to have to literally carry him off the field. And remember, the backup quarterback is a walk on. Blake boasts a walk on would be the number two guy. He and here's their quarterback situation. Haynes King down, broken. Leg Calzada making his fourth start tonight. Blake Boast has not taken a snap. And then there's a freshman. And into the medical tent goes Calzada. There's Boast. He's going, uh, let me see. I got to start warming up, I guess. Meanwhile, the extra point was good, by the way. I think it was. Mathis who got pulled right into him and fell on his leg not a dirty play at all but he knew all the way he had the matchup the safety branch who's playing because Malachi Moore got a targeting early in the game and he had his slot receiver matched up against who he won I I did have a thought that because of no quarterback or basically a walk on quarterback he might just go for two there just try to want a quarterback draw or something and try to steal the game thinking 
do I have much of a chance going overtime. Well there's three minutes left in regulation. We're tied at 38. Alabama's got two timeouts remaining. And this kickoff will bring Alabama out to the 25. Here was the extra point by Seth Small. We had so many things going on with Zach Calzada being helped off the field. We didn't show it for you, but it's good. 38-38 coming up after our game time for a minute. Adam, BJ, and Kevin. Kevin with uh, the best highlights on the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Those three guys have been in the studio since about don't think, uh, 8 o'clock this morning. Right. If you don't think Jimbo was concerned, I think he went in the tent with Calzada on that injury to see how he was. Here you go. Three minutes to go. Tie game. Brian Robinson. Holding on to the football and they're holding on to him for dear life. Jamie. Well if you want to take a couple of thumbs up as they come out of the medical tent is a good thing. Zach Calzada looks like he'll be able to come back in this game. Wow. There's good Jimbo follow him in the tent. Jimbo's going I didn't know what it looked like in here. <laughs> Pick up of only a yard for Brian Robinson. Second down and nine. One of the few times they ran right in this game. Williams has been his big target this half. Down the middle. Inactive. And that's trapped. He had him. That's Billingsley. Saw him a little late. Tried to be quick with it. And just didn't quite get it there. Could have been caught, but he couldn't handle it. Boy, that should have been caught. Not could have been. That should have been. Billingsley's been a non factor tonight. Sometimes he's huge in games, sometimes not so much. It's about to get noisy in here. You're giving him that double linebacker look right there. They've been doing it all game to the field. Third and nine. That one's tipped en route to Mechie incomplete. Fourth down. Time to punt for Alabama. How about the answer by that? AM defense. Exactly. They see their quarterback go off. All those plays they've been in and they answer. Alabama's first three and out this half. Burn it. You look behind him, set to punt. With Anaya Smith, who just made the touchdown catch, back is the punt returner. He's going to take a crack at it from the 31. Goes out to the 35. Two minutes, eight seconds remaining in regulation. AM only needs a field goal to win. And here comes Zach Calzada. Jamie was right. The thumbs up is good enough. This is what happened on his last play. Threw a strike to Anaya Smith for a touchdown. Now he's back out there to the roar of the crowd. The same people that were jeering him for two weeks are cheering and begging for him for one more drive. First down at the 35. Give it off to Spiller and Spiller lost yardage. Under two minutes now. And remember, Alabama has two timeouts remaining. If they get one more stop like this and it's third and long, I'd say Nick Saban will take a timeout. Second and 15 after the loss on the last play. Spiller switches sides with Calzada. He's back to throw. Backpedals, throws. And he got it to Spiller. And a first down. 
two Alabama players run into each other on the play. Watch. They run into each other and collide. And that's what opens up Spiller on the play. Pickup of 17. And a first down. The catch apparently under review. Did they think that Spiller stepped out of bounds? If he was juggling it going backwards, he has to get his whole foot in, not his toe. Isaiah's going, what's the problem? Here we get another look. Hmm. Did he, as he catches it. He's got it tucked to his chest there. Unless his foot was out of bounds. Was his right foot out of bounds? I think it, I thought it was in, but I thought it was in when I called it. But I don't know. That's it's hard to see on this sideline. Ooh, it might not have been. Remember, going backwards, your whole foot has to be in bounds, not just the drag of the toe. Is his left foot down? Go back, back it up just a little bit more. As he catches it, is his left foot down? All right, right there, the catch. Left foot. I think his left foot may be down before his right foot. Let's bring in Gene Steratore. Gene, well, hold on. I'm with you. I've got the left After foot video tapping review, down with position. Really on the field stands, first down. Okay. So a 17-yard pickup out to the 47. Again, two Alabama defenders run into each other. They both fall down, and that opened up the lane for the throw. Aggies have two timeouts left. A minute 26 remaining in regulation. You see that line for a target for a field goal. Calzada now running on a bad wheel and running well and getting a first down. Just think about this for AM. They've got two true freshman offensive linemen in the center, the right tackle, a backup quarterback with a bad knee. Playing against the number one team in the country. And got a first down at the 42. And now they're very close to field goal range as we approach a minute. Blitz coming. Calzada loads. Fires way up into the Alabama bench. Incomplete. It'll be second down. I thought he had a fair amount of time right there. Good coverage in the secondary. He waited as long as he thought he could. Didn't have it. He chucked it out of bounds for another down. I mean, just think about this again. The center playing in high school last year. Right tackle, fatherly playing in high school. Backup quarterback. At the 42, Toto's -to coming with a blitz out. Lotta down the middle, and he throws another strike to Anaya Smith. Same matchup. Zero against 14. And now they're in field goal range. He knew he had it. He had his slot on the strong safety, and he made him pay. Anaya Smith coming up big this half. Now they go back to Spiller. Brought down by Will Anderson as he got it to the 27 yard line. Clock winding down with on a half minute. And now under a half minute. Trying to get it in the middle of the field, I would guess, unless they try something else. They're going to throw off his back foot. He lost one for Wattemeyer. And a flag flies in. Interference. You can't blame Alabama for blitzing. They're in field goal range. They tried to get him out of field goal range. Pass and Jimbo has Defense, enough confidence to call a pass the play. The is 15 yards from the previous spot with an automatic first down. The strategy, obviously, for Bama, try to get a sack, get him out of field goal range. Man-to-man -man coverage, balls in the air, underthrown, and that's when the interference happens. The line of scrimmage now is going to be around the 12 or 13 yard line with that walk off on the interference. 
by Helms. And now with timeouts to play with, you would think Calzada is just going to have right in the middle or wherever his kicker likes. Absolutely. It. It'll be Spiller, actually, that'll get it down to the 11-yard line. And now it comes down to Seth Small. Nothing small about this situation. Timeout with one second left. 19 game winning streak on the line. The number one ranking in the country on the line. The fact that a former Nick Saban assistant has never been able to defeat him is on the line. Who knows, maybe a college football playoff position might be on the line. And it's all going to come down to Seth Small. Out of Katy, Texas. The senior who's one of the better kickers in the country. Last year, he missed two field goals in the matchup with Alabama. A heroic performance by Zach Kozak. From the first drive all the way to the finish of the game. So Seth Small. Will trot out. Alabama's already blocked a punt in this game. And they can only hope now that they could maybe do the same or force an errant kick. Or AM is going to pull the upset at home. Seth Small, 10 of 11 on the year. From 28 yards away for an Aggie upset win. And it's good. He got it. The second largest crowd in the history of this stadium has seen the upset of the number one team in the country. And Seth Small comes up big. I thought it was going to go left, but it knuckled back in. What a game. What a finish. And what a happy group of Aggies, including their head coach. He said you had to trust the process to get to this point. Don't worry about who you're playing. Just play every play like it's the biggest one. The biggest one was with one second left. And the winning streak of Alabama is over, and the winning coach is with Jamie Erdahl. Coach, you put yourself in that position because you had confidence in Zach Calzada. What about his day today? I'll tell you what, it's amazing. He's went through some tough trials and tribulations. Like I say, you need you need time in the saddle when you're a quarterback to learn. He grew up, he made the plays. We played well around him. Our defense was outstanding. We made the special team plays. But Zach's leadership and consistency, because we didn't move it for four straight drives in the second half. And the lead us down on those two drives was remarkable. And the kids around him made the plays. It was a total team. Of our assistant coaches and our players did a hell of a job. You've been through it, not just this season, but with this program, and you just beat your old boss. How does it feel? Well, I have great respect for Nick. I always say that. He's, just, he's one of the best that ever did it. And I learned a lot when I coached with him. We had a lot of good times. But we got a heck of a program here. We can be special here if we allow ourselves to keep out of win. We put some work on ourselves. We're just going to play the rest of the year out. But it was a great win for our organization. Congratulations, Coach. Thank Go you. celebrate. Thank you. Well, I guess that Houston touchdown club from the summer is going to... Jimbo told us the truth. <laughs> I'm going to beat him before he retires. We'll beat Alabama. And today they did. Just remember, after Alabama scored the touchdown to take the lead, AM came back with a touchdown, a three and out, and a field goal. They answered even when they got behind. Well, this is going to cost AM about 250 grand that most of the people in the stands are on the field, but I don't think they care. 
think they'd uh, happily pay the fine that's probably upcoming for what just happened tonight. I think you could call that a signature win for Jimbo Fisher. Absolutely. In his fourth year, that's got to be the biggest one. Well, it's time now for our plays of the game, presented by Jersey Mike Subs. This was Zach Calzado taking a hit, but delivering a perfect strike to Anaya Smith for the touchdown. And then he comes back out of the medical tent, leads the team down the field, including a big run for a first down. And then Seth Small says, I got this from 28 yards away for the win at the last moment. A thrilling game at Kyle Field. A lot of people were calling AM the most disappointing team in the conference. Yep. And tonight they pulled off the biggest win of college football season. 41 38 the final next Saturday doubleheader forget don't forget we've got a undefeated Kentucky and an undefeated Georgia and Georgia will be number one when we head to Athens I can guarantee you that that's going to wrap it up for Gary Danielson Jamie Erdahl Brad National saying so long from Kyle Field as we head to the guys in New York and upset fellas here at College Station.